Hey guys, Zergan here, and thank you for choosing my video. <laughs> In this video, I will be showing you how to make four different mob farms, all my own designs, and uh, basically just some improvements on two of them as well. Specifically, for those of you who have seen my older ones, my ooze farm and also the cinder farm. Uh, this cinder farm specifically is now a pistonless design, so you can still get those drops without the XP burning and so on. And the use farm is just fixed because it's been, uh, well, not working, basically, it keeps on breaking. And then one extra one, basically, in the mix. So four videos for you, um, so pick your choose which XP farm you would like. And, uh, yeah, away we go. And here we are. I've built a little display room this time to make it look all purdy. And, uh, yeah, so one, there we go, that'll be farm one, two three, four, that burning fire, so obviously the cinder farm. Okay, so let's start with this one. This is my favorite one. This is the poison farm. Uh, this one has by far got the highest yield, and if I was you, if you were looking to build multiple mob farms, um, yeah, definitely build this one, maybe even build a few of this one, uh, depending on your mob cap. I think if I am correct however there is a maximum and I think it's like mob type specific so that there'll probably be a maximum amount of poison mobs that you can spawn at a time unless they've changed that um, so yeah you know that could be a thing um, but it still spawns massively I've tested it out already it still spawns of all of them it spawns the most so uh, definitely the best farm to have this one here okay so let's go to building it for those of you who haven't seen my other videos so this is my basic my layout how these work is I've built them like this. This is a solid block followed by a slab so we can get in here and hit them in the feet. That's simply it. So you know, you're, you're sort of safe. Um, some, every now and then you'll take, you know, like a shot <laughs> to the face and so on. And some of the creeps will spawn with, you know, different enchantments like thorns and so on. And you'll get blight guys and everything. Right. So you obviously need the right ingredients. So the acid farm, we'll build it there. That is the new one. And. Um, and um, this will be the poison, that will be the ooze, cinder, so you need the right ingredients, you need to find the correct buckets of the liquids that makes them spawn. Magic number for all of these is 8, for all of these liquid ones. Cinder is 12, you need 12 blocks of fire to spawn cinder, these ones are 8, 8, 8, all 8 source blocks in order to make them spawn. So let's get building on this one. So basically just put your solid block here, you know, just dig dig a bit in there so this will be where the liquid will be it needs one air rock above it in order to get them to spawn that is the requirements and then above that we just build a little roof and I choose to use glass because you know so I can see what's going on in there so let's do that you guys go ahead dig that you know solid block here and then uh, I just normally these slabs you can do as many you know as wide whatever as you want but I normally just kind of break them out and then uh, you know I just do three because it's it's kind of nice to be able to kind of move in and out freely like this right so let's do that so you need to put your glass in there seal it off so that they don't wreck us when they spawn and then your slabs in around here this is two get them to stay in there the slab keeps the liquid in keeps them in of as well of course and allows us to hit through here i'm gonna break that now just be careful with your placing your placement needs to be eight like i said so i've already got one one so that's two three four five six seven eight let's just check the water if you see any flowing blocks it means it's not a source block so that'll be a problem there we go eight source blocks now they are going to be very noisy I have set my sound down already once before, so hopefully with any luck they will be spawning soon and they won't be too noisy. And as soon as they spawn we will kill a few and I'll show you that chest there um, as to the loot drops that you get. And there we go, they have spawned. Not too much, like they, they spawn in, in, in much higher numbers than this. So it's actually a small spawn um, comparatively. So let's go kill them. Just hang around here. And they see it actually comes on through. You can just hold down shift while you're underneath here to grab all the drops. And there we go. Let's see if some more here. 
Okay, so these are the drops we get from them. You get slime balls, which is really nice. The slime balls, you know, for pistons and uh, whatever else. And uh, you get the the two different mushroom types. You get some coal. You get rotten flesh. You get poison glands, and you also get hard crystals occasionally. This, um, of course, isn't the only stuff because you will get the um, blights that spawn every now and then. These special types. Um, they will give you, you know, other, you know, higher value loot and so on, random enchants and, and random stuff. But that is, you know, the kind of basis of the stuff that you get. Cool. So that is um, that. I'm gonna close that off it's because I don't want them spawning when I move on to this farm, the ooze farm. Now, for those of you who recognize this one, yes, this was not the best farm back in the day before they fixed it. It was a really nice farm, I mean, before they updated it. And then they made it so that these entities um, can destroy these source blocks when they shoot them. So that is the problem with my previous design. They would continuously con you know, keep on breaking this farm. And I found just a simple workaround that. So I'll show you guys how to do that now. So same basis as this one, except we don't use a half block. Um, with this one in order to get this to work just use a full block for your floor so there's only one block here that you're kind of looking at and the storage block will now be directly in front of you now what we do is we give this one uh we need a double ceiling height by the way with this one so we basically don't give them an air block they will spawn in the liquid but what they do is they will try and escape effectively they kind of glide through blocks because i think they're technically one and a half or two blocks tall so they will kind of try and escape and glide through so you need to make this at least two blocks you know thick you know the roof so two three probably be the best one and then you will see them every now and then they will spawn kind of float into these blocks and then come back down because it'll force them back down and uh, basically uh, the mechanics behind this is hang on i need to fill up the ceiling here so let's just give this a uh, nice little roof there the mechanic that I basically use here to fix this farm effectively is don't give them direct line of sight. So effectively, they are never becoming aggro on us. With this block here and them in there, they will never see us. They will just be taking damage. We will be able to hit their feet through this block and we can right click to pick up the loot. Of course, the XP will come pouring through. And basically, that is all we do. So yeah, never give them direct line of sight, when, and that's why I don't want to be um, as low as this one, because I'm afraid that they might, you know, look you in the eye. That's that's how that works, by the way, for you guys who, who didn't know that. I'm sure most people know this, but if you didn't, um, you know, it's um, it, it's something you learn later on once you start looking into mob farms and stuff. Um, they only aggro, like, basically, if you basically literally won't look them in the eyes. So it needs to be, you know, eye-to-eye to eye contact, effectively, in order for them to become aggro. So spawning them like this, hopefully they won't take too long. But, um, yeah, then we will be hitting them in the ankles. They will never see what's killing them. <laughs> and um, then we will still get the yummy, yummy XP, and we'll get all the drops by right-clicking. And that is basically my workaround. You can, if you if you want to gamble, um, you can build like yeah. You know, if you remove this chest, that is, you can build yourself a little cobblestone path underneath there, like to circle around, kind of you know go through here, go in there, and then you can kind of shift underneath there still, hold down shift while you move through there to pick it up after you've killed them all, like with this farm. But then basically you would need to do that in between the spawns and it's a bit risky in that if you know because they, they do sometimes double spawn in a way as in just as soon as you've killed them you know the um the new um spawns will come on in so you might be shifting underneath that if you do that and then they will spawn they'll have eye contact and then they will shoot as soon as they shoot they destroy the source block and your farm will stop breaking so just gonna hang around here for a bit let's see if they spawn i mean obviously they will spawn but just when they spawn so let me stand here and wait for them. And there we go. They have all spawned. This is a bit typical batch size for these guys. I've never seen them spawn more than five at a time. I think it might be maxed out at five or six if they can spawn. But anyway, so there they are. As you can see, like I said, they are inside the glass. So they effectively can't see us. Um, we can see them. And more importantly, we can see their feet. So we shall, I said we can see their feet. So yeah, I can probably hold shift here just to get, uh, get them. Okay, they are 
all annoyingly flying a bit, but there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. And now as you see that, yeah, you can right click to click that stuff up. I don't want to right click because I'm going to put down this lamp in my hand. But uh, yeah, we can pick up all the stuff there. See, holding on shift, you don't get that stuff. Now that's what I said, you'll have to right click to pick that stuff up. But that's alright, I'm more up for the, oh there's some stuff floating up in there. So if you want the ice, then I guess you'll have to, uh, you know, you have to go under there. I don't know why you would want the snowballs or the ice, but anyway, it's probably for maybe so some of the lining, the, the cooling lining, to be honest. But yeah, you can uh, then definitely just build some slabs in here. You know, you can just do something like this. It looks ugly. I don't like it. But anyway, you can definitely do this. And just kind of hold shift and jump. Hold on shift and jump as you go by and then we got all the loot that way. So you can definitely do that. You just need to make sure you're not under there when they spawn. Like I said, oh, it's going to break your farm. So stuff we got there. This is all the stuff we just picked up. So yeah, this is all the stuff we get from this farm. Frost powder, ice, ice fireball charge, snowball, snowball. And I haven't really run this through. There's probably some more stuff in here that you'll get from this. This is just from, you know, a couple of rounds. And, you know, haven't been picking up everything. So there's probably more than that. This looks awful. Cool. So, yeah. That is the uh, ooze farm. Let me close this down. Don't want anything spawning in there. I only need to block down one, but still. So that's the ooze farm done. Let me leave the um, cinder farm for now. Let me go to the acid farm. Right, so. I like I like the different colors. <laughs> anyway, blue, purple, green. Anyway, so uh, ooze farm. Basically, like I've done them all. Still same-ish design. I like my slabs. Full block here, and I'll still you know uh, slabbing it up. So just two blocks ahead of you. You want a solid block in front of you, and then the thing with this one is we make this one two blocks deep for once. So we. Oh man. Excuse me. Yeah. So we just make it two blocks deep. We make a trough here, basically a trough, and we uh, break that and we pop this in there. And now I have a trough and we fill this up with the liquid in a moment. I don't want them spawning everywhere. But what we do now is we leave two blocks above the liquid. One, two, one, two, one, two, and then we put a block above that, and then one block up is where our actual ceiling is, and then we seal it off. Now I'll tell you guys why we do this. This is due to the, or what I've seen, this is due to the uh, Zaffan Par thing really. They are like the cinders, uh, which is how the other farm works. The cinder farm here works as well. It's due to the uh, the AI Par thing that they have basically. Uh, I guess we can call it due to their behavior I guess. So their behavior is they spawn and then they kind of want to fly upwards. They want to rise effectively. So this basically um, lets, lets them spawn. They will float up to around here. Um, and then they will try and wander still, so then they will come up here and get stuck here. As soon as they are here, between this and the glass, this is where we will be hitting them in order to get the loot. So it, they will get knocked behind this thing here, you know, it will keep them in place so we can continue on hitting them so the loot drops underneath them. Because this stuff is like fire, it destroys items and XP orbs, which is very annoying. So, uh, if they are here as well, if you hit them, the items will still fall in here, but the XP uh, will still bounce forward because, you know, it, it gets attracted to you mid-air. So the XP will still come on through, the items will fall in the water here, but most of them, 80% of them, will end up up here. Because they'll, they'll try and roam, and then you can hit them here. Right, let's fill this up. Well, no, actually, let's just finish building them in. So let's build our glass wall. <laughs> That's so annoying. <laughs> Right, so that basically means that these Zaffans don't actually need eight. Very interesting. This being the new farm, we've just learned something. I've learned something. Makes me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. But we've just learned something in that they can spawn in just one source block. That's quite interesting. Anyway, let's still do it eight because eight. And uh, yeah, there we go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Nice and seal that off. Here we go, some of the drops. Let's pick all this up. Cool. Now let's just stand around here, wait for them to spawn, and I'll show you how it works. It's a bit slower in that if you want the drops, you need to wait for them to rise to, you know, to the final bit. Come all the way to the front and go up. 
but I mean apart from that you still get um, all the XP so if you want to maximize and build multiple different farms then this is definitely another way to do that um, the only one thing with this is however the um, the goo the the actual asset pools have been quite hard to find like um, of all of them I must say um, like the ooze and the poison actually being the uh, the better one uh, I were quite easy to find the ooze uh, the asset bucket I mean was the easiest uh, the hardest one to find wow why do I keep like saying random words anyway so acid one hardest one to find um, and uh, yeah like for the results not as much and you can kind of spawn zaphans in other ways as well which is water and lava but I like this design I'm gonna stick with this this design and I feel like it's plenty already at some point I'll look into other farm designs but um, for now I've just worked on these ones so I'm just gonna sit here for a moment and wait for these suckers to reveal themselves and then we will kill them and I'll show you how that works and there we go they have spawned you can see them rising already some of them rising coming to the front that's what we want so I normally stand around for a bit is what I did wait for them all to kind of rise a little there you see rising rising good 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 all apart from that little sucker there and um, yeah, that's basically what we want. You want them to rise up. And now we can go ahead and beat them. There you see, even these ones here, even though they're at the back, they haven't gone all the way to the top, we're still getting the XP. And this one here is at the very front, so there we go. All the drops falling on here. Let's deposit what we've just found. So we found. Acid Splash, Bone, and Slime Balls is what we found. So we get Acid, spl no, what, get acid Splash Charge for, you know, leveling up stuff and uh, whatever. Probably leveling pets, I think, as well. Hot Crystals, which is very nice for upgrading your life. If it still is that way, haven't played too much in the new patch, but it should be for increasing your max life, I believe. Slime Ball and Bone. And this here, oh, the Chaos, oh, it's a good thing that I put this here. So, um, worth mentioning here. <laughs> Um, don't build your farm obviously like I have this is very unsafe the uh, what do you call it? the chaos elementals like when you kill these guys the chaos dudes will spawn and uh, yeah they are like uh, super annoying so uh, definitely build it more secure like this try and build in you know tiny tiny compartments build build these things in smaller rooms obviously um, right so I need to stop these guys from spawning see they haven't risen up yet so if I kill them here all the XP would fall in there you won't get anything no items no XP so I just have to sit, sit around for a while, wait for them to come up. See that one, good, that one's up. That We can get the XP from that one now, and there goes that one as well. Cool, so give me the XP. Yay. Give me XP. Oh, I only got one XP there. See the rest of the items all gone? Yeah, boom. Okay, stop spawning. Sorry, I just need to kill this guy so I can disable this. Uh, all the way, as we've learned that they don't need... There we go, that's fine. As we have just learned that they don't need 8 blocks, I need to disable all of them. There we go. Because otherwise he'll be annoying and making random noises in the background. Perfect, so that is the asset farm. Now, doing the cinder one. This one took me a while, this, um, yeah, this one's probably the hardest. Because I had to kind of tinker with the idea of uh, not doing this with any pistons to help whatsoever. Because, I know, like you guys, you don't want to do it like loads of redstone stuff. It's the most... Um, frustrating thing is having to do redstone on a, on a farm particularly if you don't want to do any redstone and if you just haven't got any redstone like tools and stuff available um, this guy's super annoying Let's see if I can kill him quickly cool. yeah the reason for me doing this in creative is my other videos were way too long I kind of um, made them on the fly whilst playing and they didn't make good tutorials so, here we go. So, the cinder farm. This one is eight blocks deep, so let's say it starts here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and... Okay, well, just start seven. So, yeah, just just dig eight. This will be the entrance. If you count it from here, that'll be eight. So, just go eight blocks in. As soon as we reach this point, we dig four down. So, yeah, one block, two block, three block, four blocks, so in total. So, this block in front of your face, exactly four down. We put our netherrack down. Now netherrack, you guys should be able to find that pretty easily. You know, just pop onto the nether. Um, 
Well, I guess you don't have to. There's other places you can get them in random building structures and chests. You find netherrack pretty easily. They kind of spawn around as well. So yeah, that's that's pretty easy. And to just get your netherrack um, with these cinders, netherrack. Um, you have to get, uh, you have to put twelve of them down. Um, not put not netherrack, of course. It's just because of the fire. So you need twelve sources of fire to get them to spawn. So I'll be setting these on fire in a moment. And then also the spawning requirements used to be one block of air beside the block of fire. So not the actual, not this block, but this, the actual fire, the entity, I suppose, as such, the fire being an entity. So um, now the requirement is only one block of air above, I believe. So I've made it two. And that is because they are too big to move through a single block, I've noticed, which kind of messes us up. So we put them all down here. So it has to be where the fire block is, two blocks above it. So look at the ceiling. So we come back out from this block. One block out and a second block out. Perfect. So we built a little ceiling here. Boink. And one block up. So one block out, one block up. And we build a little glass ceiling here. You can use any block you want. I just like seeing them. And there we go. Nice little ceiling. And then we do some slabs. Cool. So it should look like this. We've got this nice secure block here, right on the opposite side of that should be the fire, two blocks above, and then from there it's one block, two blocks out, and you have a little free space here with this slab. Perfect. Now we just build another row of glass here. So there's a nice little gap there where we can keep sight of them and hit them through. Dug. And now this part here, the water. Very important. So let's just break all this. So we need a flow of water coming through here. So we just put some water source blocks all along these. Okay, cool. And then another row of slabs here. Now we'll just need to set these on fire to get them spawning. Just let me get in there, please. Cool. So now they will start spawning. Let's build this and make this closed system. Cool. There we go. So 12 blocks, like I said. This water is three blocks where it comes out, and that is perfect. Now, why I've done this is, I hate this farm. I really do. I hate farming cinders, they always kill me. And um, this is why I've done this here. This little step here, it blocks the water, it doesn't stop us. But if you move an inch forward, like see where the bubbles are, that, that counts as you touching water. So as soon as they hit you, you just move a little bit forward and then you extinguish yourself. So straight away, straight away. And they will shoot you at some point, they always do. But basically we can hit them through this gap here. I've designed this so that we can hit them through here, but you can't hit the flame, you see it's it's, it's too far. We can't hit the flame, so no more of that issue of you know constantly killing the flame while we're trying to farm them. And um, how they come forward here is a combination of, as soon as they make eye contact with you, through there or there, they are going to come forward, they'll aggro and they'll come forward. If they don't see you, they will still try and roam, similar to the Zaphans. So they will still try and head upwards. They always want to head upwards, this is what I've noticed. So they'll come up here and they will get stuck here behind this slab and this block here. And their vision, well, let me show you basically what this is going to look like to a cinder is like this. They'll be stuck here. Uh, uh, and we will not be knocking them back like this. They'll get stuck behind this so they don't go back all the way. Their drops and eggs will fall in the water and it gets washed on through with us on the other side. You can just nice and cozily hold shift, pick it up and suck up all the XP. Right, does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so now we just have to wait for them to spawn yet again. And then I'll just show you how we deal with them or how that looks like exactly. And we're off. There we 
go. See, our first customers have arrived. There you see the AI path thing I was just talking about. You see him hitting up there, getting stuck. That's exactly what we're all about. Now, a couple of them should be following, like, sweet soon, doing the same kind of move. But also, as soon as we aggro one, then they'll do the same as well. There's another one. So as soon as you hit one and he takes aggro, hit the, his buddies um, will try and attack you as well. I'll see if I can pop myself into survival quickly. Show you guys how uh, how this works. Um, so they are going to aggro and probably hit me immediately. But from here, I can chop them. See, there you go. So I'm just going to sit here. See, he wants to get me now. So I just hold shift. I alternate between these two steps. Eye contact. No eye contact. Eye contact. No eye contact. Well, not at the moment, but if he was a, this guy here, has got eye contact, you see. So he should theoretically start and shooting me right now when he gets the chance. Instead, I'm just going to hit him in the face. Cool, you see the XP coming through. There you see. Oh, he's trying to hit me. Haha. <laughs> yeah, come on. If they don't go up there, no fear, you can hit them here. Like I said, you can't hit the flames, we're too far. This is where I designed it, so ha. And now all the yummy yummy drops come on through, we just hold shift, you see all them come washing through. Nummy nummy nummy, yum yum yum, yum 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 yum. Now just wait for these guys to come on through with the pathing. There we go, ooh that's a nice one. Alright, so at some point one of them is going to shoot me, it always happens. At which point I'm going to try to extinguish myself here. Shoot me, there we go. <laughs> you cannot defeat me! <laughs> you cannot... But what's it? You cannot judge me. I am justice itself. Ha! Yeah, it helps you. There we go. You stand here. Oh no. Ooh, well that was weird. I don't know why it didn't hit me. Anyway, so those things are uh, a problem. So yeah, you need to uh, build it in an enclosed space. And uh, yeah, that's that's how this farm works. I'm gonna put myself back into creative because I don't want them murdering me right at the end of the video. I'm pretty surprised I didn't die there already, to be honest. And that's how that works. Yeah. So all the nice loot. Okay. So some of it, like you see, some of some stuff will fall there, but that is just the way it is. Um, you will still get most of it. It's much more reliable than all of the other cinder farms already, and you sh unless you use pistons, which is a lot of effort. So this is the most reliable, reliable piston-free one at this stage. Um, to be fair, I haven't checked any other people's like cinder farm designs, but so I, I might just be a bit biased in saying that this is the best farm. Um, but yeah, this is just very nice in my opinion, and I like that it's like I said, piston free and all that. Um, one more tip I've got for you guys when designing this, obviously build it in a much much smaller room, like I said, secured so the chaos thing doesn't beat the living daylights out of you. But build it so that I actually need to. I want to kill this. Um, Oh, actually, I'll just leave it. Hell it. Just design it so that maybe your entrance is coming from this side, if you know what I mean. So if you build this in a room so that you, your wall is kind of running along here type of thing. So that if you if you build it in like a, a massive mob room like I've done now, they will occasionally like throw balls of fire at you. So you'll be like doing your thing here or there, not keeping an eye on them, and then they will kind of hit you in the ass. So uh, yeah, design it so that it is like pointing to a wall, not looking down a corridor, that type of thing, so that they uh, don't harass you all the time. These are, I'm not sure if I've said this already, but this is by far the farm, or it used to be, like um, this cinder farm is always um, how I die the most in all of my XP greed, shall I say. So yeah, they are the ones that kill me the most of all mobs. And I've just stopped doing magma farms altogether because I've had nasty spawns from there. If you go too big, you get like horrible spawns from magma and the, the XP isn't worth it. So uh, yeah, let's do this instead. Right. Okay, so in terms of where you get this stuff, um, let me see if I've got... No, I haven't got... I need the uh, poison bucket. Da -da -da -da, not that one. There we go. Poison bucket for display purposes. So poison bucket... I've already had a look where we can find this stuff. I've just had a look in the updated world. I've done some flying around for a couple of hours, actually. Um, so, in, to find the uh, poison liquid, I have usually... I have? No, I just... I usually did find them in the dark forest. Now, that doesn't seem to be a thing here anymore, unless I've missed it. So, the dark forest biome looks like it's changed to the roofed forest. It's a very dark forest to be the giveaway. Har <laughs> har, who would have guessed? So if you find a very dark forest that has like blocks out all the sunlight and loads of um, you know nasty nasty guys spawn that wanna 
um, destroy you, I suppose. Um, then yeah, you've probably find a roof forest. The way to is the handy tip. If you want to see what biome you is, use the compass. That is the way to tell in this game. You hold the compass in your hand. You see, it shows there. I'm currently in a Mesa Plateau. So yeah, so if you hold the compass in your hand, you'll be able to find these biomes. Um, that'll be the way to tell what biome you're in if you think that you might have found a root for it. But yeah, so uh, the poison pretty abundant um, in the defiled lands as always is kind of where it comes from. So defiled lands, you will always find poison there. Um, but more widespread, you will also find it in the roofed forest biome. The dark forest biome, if it still exists, I think it might not. But you also find it in the swampland and the variant of the swampland, the lush swamp as well. So yeah, that is where you'll find uh, this poison here. You also find all of these underground and, you know, um, behind the walls and stuff. Like when you're at dungeons and stuff, you'll uh, you'll find these liquids as well. They're, they're uh, yeah, in abundance. Um, right, to the next one, ooze. You'll find them, who would have guessed, in cold biomes. So snowy biomes. I found these ones, well not these ones because I'm in creative, but I did find some of these already in the taiga biome. Not the taiga variants, it seems, but um, I might just have been unlucky. So I did find um, a couple of these in the taiga biomes and also the glacier biome, which is, you know, the giant ice mountains. So those are the, the two I know they spawn, um, definitely spawn, and you can find them underground as always too. Netherrack, I mean netherrack. Um, and then the acid one. So this one looks like it might have changed, I'm not sure, but uh, it should have been spawning in desert biomes. But I've gone through loads of desert. I might have once again just been unlucky, but I went through tons and tons of desert. Did not find any of this um, up until I found a desert variant. I found a desert shrubland where I found loads of these. So yeah, they, 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 I'm not sure I am if they've been nerfed in the, uh, the desert biomes or what was. Maybe Shivaxi did his thing. But um, yeah, they are definitely still found in the desert shrubland biomes and also underground is where you find this one particularly. It's quite rare for some reason, not being the greatest one, um, this acid. But uh, yeah, and that's where you find them. That's where I found them. You'll probably find them in other places as well. If you find them in other places, you know, please go ahead and uh, just leave it in the comments below so we can kind of all keep track of where they spawn or where they get nerfed, you know, these types of biomes. If you guys could help me out and do that, that would be awesome so that we can keep track of the XP farms as Shivaxi kind of nerfs them as time goes on. And that is just about that. I am just going to kind of purge here, I suppose. And uh, do a little outro thingy. So yeah, guys, that is... Uh, these are my new updated mob farms. I hope they helped you guys. Um, I really enjoyed making them. I'm glad you guys obviously um, enjoy watching these videos and uh, that they help you. If you did enjoy them, please go ahead and give me a like, subscribe. Really means a lot to me. Um, and also, you know, anything on your mind, pop in the comments. I respond a lot. So yeah, you know, just go ahead and uh, do it. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. That is that from me. Thank you for watching. And this is Zerger saying, there's a creeper behind you. <laughs> and goodbye!